Yes, sir. Hey, what's up, guys. Schmuckies? Okay. And we're going to Just thought I'd do a quick video. I just posted uh, some uh, stuff up on YouTube about two of my brothers. Their little brother who killed himself. Uh, he was on that Scared Straight program when they came through where I live. Um, sometimes when I get to thinking about him, I'll... Watch it so I can hear his voice. Brad was a character, man. <laughs> he was always... <laughs> He'd take a beer bottle, put it on his ass cheek and twist it and open the beer, <laughs> beer bottle. Uh... Nate took it real hard when Brad died. Uh, we all did. His uh, brother Dwayne's the buddy of mine that knew Dave Mustaine. And then his brother Brian. Brian's still alive, but he's not doing good at all since Dwayne died. Those two were, it's like for Brian to lose Dwayne, it's like Brian losing half of himself. They were wards of the state together for a while, uh, foster homes. Brian's not doing good at all. Brian's, uh, that buddy of mine that's so damn big, he's got to duck down to get through the. <laughs> he's got to duck down to get through the fucking front door of my house. He was coming over to. He goes, man, what's your new address, Mark? He said, I want to come over and see you, man. His click, they had a crew at in Fairview Heights. And we had a crew in Belleville. And it's like the two crews merged. We merged the night time. He got his, well, actually it was the night that I pulled that nightstick out of that female cop's hand. Um, body of mine time, he got beat. Got jumped by a bunch of guys. And we went by the house they were all at. Cops were waiting on us there. They knew we were coming. But we were walking down the street, and I looked down the alley where we was going by this alley. Seen a whole big group of motherfuckers come down the alley. I said, who the fuck's that? And we all stopped. And they fucking, they got under that light in the alley, and it was Dwayne and Brian and Roger, Brad, all of them. Uh... So what the fuck are you guys doing here? They said we heard about what happened to Tommy. We want some too. Uh, Tommy's my brother that got deported to Germany. First night I met Tommy, I was at a party. And he got in a fight with four guys. These motherfuckers flipped a wooden kitchen table over, pulled the fucking wooden legs off the table and were beating time with the wooden legs. It went on for a minute, man. Time just kept coming, kept coming, kept coming, kept coming. And finally, I told the dude I was with, I said, fuck this, man. I'm jumping in and helping them. And we jumped in. Me and the other guy beat the shit out of them dudes with time. Me and Tom was friends ever since. 
He was one of the original members of that little clique I had going. Um, but, yeah, Brian, I gave Brian my address, and I had just gotten into it with my sister, Michelle, who's married to Jimmy, and Jimmy was in that clique with Brian before he met me, and I told my son, Seth, I said, man, I hope his intentions are good. And so I said, oh, don't worry, Dad, I got your back. I said, oh, hell no. I said, you stay the fuck out of it. You get to hitting them, too, you're just going to piss them off worse. And he said, you think you can whoop both of our asses? And I said, the shape I'm in right now, not being able to breathe and shit, fuck yeah, probably could. Uh, and my son Seth was getting ready to go to work. He went to open a door just as Brian was getting ready to knock. And Seth scooted over. Brian ducked down, come up in the house. My son went to work. And it was a good visit. He was just coming over to see how I was doing, check on me. Fuck him. <laughs> My son got home from work and he says, uh, damn, dad. He, he said, that dude is fucking huge. He said, he's a monster. I said, I don't care how big he is. I don't give a shit how big he is. He's a seasoned street fighter to boot. He knows how to fight. Uh, and, uh, I mean, Brian, I'm six foot, 240 pounds. Brian, I stand at the bottom of his chest. And when I look up at Brian, I look up at Brian like this. His hand's bigger than my fucking head. I mean, Brian's fucking huge. I don't know exactly how tall he is. I'm guessing probably six 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 seven. Uh probably close to four hundred pounds. He's a big dude. Uh I love that brother though. Really do. Um I was clowning saying Amy locked me in the closet on Facebook one day and I I said that Nate and Bobby and them snitched me out and told her, told her that I had a burner phone in there and Zuzu's and Wham Whams. And I get a call from Brian. He's pissed. He's like, who the fuck snitched you out? And I said, what are you talking about? He said, somebody told me that on Facebook, something about you got snitched out or something. <laughs> I said, Brian. So I was just clowning, bro. Uh, I said, and I said, Bobby, Nate, Johnny, Shane. I said, I pretty much named the motherfuckers in that town that ain't snitching. And uh, he goes, damn, man. And I go, what? He goes, now I got to turn around and go home. He, motherfucker was on his way into town. Me and Brian always was tight. I'm going to go for a ride here. But no, Brad was... Brian and Dwayne's little brother and their dad, Danny, lives out in California. He's got a big construction company out there. And uh, Danny is like Genghis Khan in the sense that he has a lot of kids by a lot of different women, but he, he uh, helps support all of them. Uh, I dated three of his daughters. Jesus, Tracy, and then uh, Tina, Shannon, that's all of them, all three of them, he's got a lot of daughters, Cindy, the one I chased at, she said she used to hate my guts, and I'm like, why did you just hate my guts, your brothers are two of my best friends, she's like, you chased the dude through my house. And I had forgotten about, there's so much shit, I can't keep track of everything I've done. But uh, Brad was always life of the party, man. He was funny. I loved him like a nephew. I truly did. That little thing we had, I founded it on like a, like a bike club, you know? Uh, your family's my family. I love them and I'll protect them just like my own. Uh, your old lady's always safe with me. Ain't even gonna think about it. 
Fucking, I'll never lie to you. I'll never steal from you. And if you got to go to war, I'll be right there next to you, you know. Uh, but, yeah, he was, they put him in SAG. And uh, he told the guard he was going to kill himself. And the guard told him, go ahead and do it then. And he did. And there was a guy from the neighborhood that was in there and heard the whole fucking conversation they had and his family got some money for it but it don't bring Brad back Nate really took it hard really took it hard he's almost like a son to Nate we known him since he was a kid uh Such a waste. Such a fucking waste. Let me think. Brad. Roger killed himself. Roger, man, that dude. Roger was not big at all. He was he was small, but he was good with his fist. He got in a fight one night with this big dude. Big motherfucker. And I was like, oh shit. Every time one of us would go to jump in there, because Roger's on the ground. This big dude's just kicking the shit out of him. And every time somebody go in to, to try to fucking get a hold of that big dude, Roger's like, stay the fuck out of it. I got it. Stay out of it. After a while, that big guy started panting and breathing real heavy. Roger popped up, fresh as a daisy, and beat the fuck out of that motherfucker, man. Beat the fuck out of him. And uh, we went to the bar afterwards. And I said, damn, Roger. I said, I ain't never seen no shit like that. What the fuck was that? The roly-poly technique? <laughs> he fucking just down there covering up real good. He took some good kicks to the kidneys, though. Reminds me of the night. Oh, man, this dude. This dude's a beast. He fucking... Did time for manslaughter, hit a dude too hard. And he was looking for me. And it was over bullshit. It was he said, she said bullshit that I didn't even do. And uh, I see him come in the bar, man, and he started walking real fast around the bar. He made eye contact with me. And I got up off the bar, and I kind of started walking real fast towards him, and I, I got lucky. I sprang off my left foot, and I got my left arm right around his fucking throat. He didn't chuck, tuck his chin, and I swung around on his back, and you talk about holding on for eight seconds, man. He was slamming me into the bar. There's a pillar in that bar in the middle of it, slamming me into that, trying to get me off his back. I had my legs wrapped around his stomach and had him in a sleeper. And I knew, I knew if he got loose, I was fucked. Seriously fucked. This dude hit so fucking hard that it ain't funny. Uh, and eventually he went 90-90. He's sleeping. And that's normally when I would have started stomping on your head back then, but I got my ass up out of there. <laughs> crazy motherfucker jugging Joe, man. I seen him like, uh, it was like two months after that. It was in another bar, not the same one, though. He walked in, I jumped up out of the bar stool. Fucking, he goes, it's cool, Mark. It's cool. And fucking as he's walking towards me, he's like, dude, I found out that you didn't do that. You know, it was bullshit. I said, I told you that, man. And I said, man, I'm sorry about what happened. He goes, no, man, don't worry about it. He said, you did what you had to do, you know. Uh, he said that his cousin told him, he said, you're lucky he didn't stab you up while you were unconscious. Uh, that motherfucker there, dude. I mean, he's a good fighter and he hits like, well, he killed a man. He hit him so hard. Uh I got a pretty good jaw, but 
I wasn't wanting none of that. That crazy motherfucker. He brushes his teeth with bleach. Puts bleach on his toothbrush. He rinses his mouth. He doesn't swallow it. But fuck, man, it's bleach. Dude's fucking crazy, man. Yeah, I was holding on for dear life. I knew if he got loose, I was fucking so screwed, man. Because he's a better street fighter than me, too. Uh, he'd have fucked me up. I just got lucky that he didn't fucking... I juked and then pushed off that left foot and got my left arm right around his throat, swung around his back, and I'm so glad he didn't tuck his chin. But, man, my back was all fucked up for a minute, slamming me into shit. Got a 300-something pound man slamming you into things. And I wrapped my legs around him because I've had dudes come up and get me in the sleeper. Uh, I reach back and grab him by the balls. You'd be, you'd be surprised how responsive a man is when you got him by the nutsack. All's fair in love and war. Uh, you grab a motherfucker by the balls. They yes sir, no sir you. Uh, you. They let go of your balls real quick. That was early on though. I keep my fucking chin tucked now all the time. Not so well for the guy in front of me, and you never know who's going to come up behind you. Uh, I fucked up in prison. Me and this guy locked up in a cell, and it was just to bet on. It wasn't that we really had a beef with each other. Little bitty Mexican dude, and I was strong back then. I got big headed and I thought, man, I'm going to pick this motherfucker up by his throat and just slam him through the ground. Uh, big mistake. We walk in my cell and I walk in, he walks in behind me and he picked my stinger up off my fucking, off my uh, little shelf by my sink. Motherfucker choked me unconscious with my own stinger. Uh, talk about fucking underestimating your enemy. If it was real, I'd be dead right now. He would have killed me. But I learned another lesson from it. Learned another lesson from it. I won two fights doing that, but I lost that one because I was cocky and I underestimated the dude. I mean, once you got up in a cell, no knives or nothing, but uh, pretty much it was on up in the cell, and that stinger was sitting there, and he he he, he used the tools at his disposal, so to say, uh, and fuck, I felt it go around my neck, but it was too late to get that fucking hand in between there or the fingers, you know, he just choked me unconscious, and I went to see the Sandman, but yeah, I, I watched that video, wanted to hear Brad's voice today, and Nate still ain't back, he usually comes back on Monday, no news is good news though, because everybody over there on that side of the river knows anything happens to Nate, and I don't get a call. I'm going to take that real fucking person on. So is a few other brothers. Because I am my brother's keeper. I have had no better friend my entire life than Nate. Uh, he's my best friend. It's funny. At our poker game, the six of us that are left... We are all white prison gang members from two different organizations. And I swear, I, said, I told Johnny one time, I said, if somebody would walk in there and ask us who the best man among us is, and Johnny goes, Nate. And I said, that's what I'm trying to say, man. You know, they got us labeled as white nationalists and shit. For some reason, if you're in a white prison gang, you're racist. Uh, the group I was in, it's not what it used to be, but it was formed because white men were getting exploited by blacks and Mexicans. Uh, 
It was a survival thing. What well, didn't have nothing to do with racism, not whenever I was serving under it. Uh, but, you know, it's kind of funny, though, that, I mean, it. if somebody walked in and they said, who's the best man among you guys here? Every one of those white prison gang members would point at Nate and say, Nate is. Nate's got a big heart, man, sometimes too big of a heart. I get angrier when somebody takes advantage of or hurts somebody that I care about than I do my, if they fuck with me. And there's been a couple times I wanted to flip out on people over Nate. I was getting ready to, and then he went over and slapped the fuck out of Bobo. Uh, <laughs> I said, I'm glad you did that. He goes, why? I said, because I was getting ready to fucking reach out and touch somebody, man. Uh, he's there for everybody. Problem is, he's been running with people that are just fucking users, man. They ain't even brothers. They ain't even really friends. I don't know what he's thinking, but he's my brother. He's not my fucking kid. I don't ever tell a grown man what to do. Never. It's fucking disrespectful. Me and my brothers have been in a lot of fights over shit like that. I met most of them fighting against them. Tommy, I fought for him. Johnny, pulled a knife out on him, swept his legs, fucking head knife to his throat. I let him go. I left the party like 45 minutes later, and like an hour, about 15 minutes after I left, he showed up at the party with a gun. He was going to blow my brains out. Uh... Miyamoto Musashi, Book of Five Rings. I I was arrogant, man. I put scars on motherfuckers' faces to remember me by, and that is stupid. Don't use a knife to cut. Don't use a sword to cut. If you're going to use it, use it to kill. Uh, don't play around. But, uh, yeah, he, he was going to kill me. And a mutual friend of ours said, don't shoot Mark, man. Mark's cool. We got to hanging out, became brothers. Johnny's partially maybe responsible for my life. He's the one that recommended me when that other organization told me to cover a tattoo up and I refused to. He didn't know nothing about that. I didn't tell nobody nothing about that. Was I scared? Fuck yeah, I was scared. But I tried to keep it out of my walk and keep it out of my eyes. When a organization in a maximum security penitentiary tells you something and they tell you you got a week, if you ain't scared, you're crazy or you're a fucking liar. Uh, but I found fear is kind of a good thing. It really is. Makes you more alert. Keeps you on your toes. And that adrenaline. Whenever I flipped out on that Tommy dude, I tried to help out and he brought fucking heroin up to my house, motherfucker. I was in a rage and I noticed I was going up and down that steps like a thoroughbred, man. And uh, somebody told me they think that when... Your adrenaline flows, it gives you more oxygen or something. I don't know. All I know is I was breathing like a thoroughbred. Because normally I go up the stairs one time and I'm fucking wiped out. But I was up and down those steps about 15, 20 times. Deciding if I was going to poke him or... Fucking Nate kept saying, think Amy, think Amy, think Amy. Motherfucker brought fucking heroin up in my house. Knowing that I was off of it, that's my drug of choice. Then I was risking my freedom helping him. And he brought dope in my house. Motherfucker. 
Never seen a man with a big beard fucking crying so hard that the tears are just dripping out of his beard. See, he remembers me the way I used to be, and he knew. He knew he was in danger. He was in serious danger. I would think of Amy, like Nate said, but I would also think about my son Josh that was upstairs. Uh, because he don't, he was 18 then, just turned 18. He, he, he don't need to be seeing that, being involved in that, nowhere near that. Told him to call somebody, come get him. And the dude got here, and my son Josh said, you can go in if you want. I could hear the guy all the way up in the living room. He said, I ain't fucking going in there because I was still flipping up. I was pissed. I always felt bad for Tommy because it seemed like he always tried helping people and he got fucked over. And then I try to help him and I get fucked over. See how that works? But I ain't never going to stop helping people when I can just because somebody fucked up. I take a homeless person home a couple times a year. I know what it's like to be out on the bricks. I really liked uh, Free From Fetters Groves uh, live last night. I put it up on my community page. Me and that man's in the same mindset. I've been sitting here for the last six, seven years focusing on what he was talking about last night. Uh, there's bad shit coming, real bad shit coming. But what matters in life? I've said that in some of my videos. The things that used to matter don't. And the things that didn't do. Like money. Can't take a fucking penny with you. All you take with you when you leave this body is your soul. With the lives you touched and the lives you've hurt. All your memories and what you've learned while you were here. Can't take a fucking single penny with you. When I found out I might not have a whole lot of time and I thought about what mattered to me, I just want it to be at peace and not be angry anymore. And I want it to finish what I felt like I was always supposed to do. But I wasn't going to do videos telling some kid to do right when I was high on heroin. For 20 years, I've been telling my wife I'm supposed to because I got a lot of people who know me in real life. They're like, man, Mark, you ought to write a fucking book, dude. Out in Arizona, Mickey and, and them, they didn't believe none of my stories until Gary had talked me down that night. I got a hold of that guy that threatened to kill my wife and kids. And next day we went to Mickey's and Gary said, hey, Mickey, you know all that shit he talks about back in St. Louis? Mickey said, yeah, what about it? And Gary said, it's true, Mickey. He said, he's going to kill that motherfucker. I said, what, you guys didn't believe my stories? And really, to tell you the truth, I don't tell all my war stories, but if I, if I could remember them all and I told them all, or somebody told them to me, I'd be like, yeah, whatever, motherfucker. I wouldn't believe it neither. And then you wonder, you know, how am I still fucking here? By the grace of God, that's it, point blank. Without a doubt, by the grace of God. I never was particularly tough. I was tough. I could take hits. I could fight, but I wasn't a great fighter. I wasn't real good with my fist. But I would go from one to 150 in 2.2 .2 seconds. I would take it all away from 
we're fighting to, uh, I want to take you out. And people knew that. Uh, they knew that I might try to kill them over something stupid. Uh, the guy I chased through Cindy's house, I can't remember what his name was or what he did to me. You would think if you're going to be shooting at somebody, they would do something to you that, that you would remember. It would be something serious. That's how fucked up I was. Because I don't know his name, and I don't know what he did. Couldn't fucking tell you. Ain't got a clue. Don't got a clue. Don't hang up. Say she got it all. She got a whole lot of roses. Whole lot of roses. Come on, darling. Be good to me. I'll be good to you. Who loves you, Rosie? I love you. <laughs> Rosie! You're acting like my ex now. Ah, you're not being a good girl. Come on, Rosie. Be good to me. I'm good to you. Brad. That's where that possum was living right there in that hole in that fucking tree. The lady over there died and the daughter stole the house out from in that hole. I come home and the cat over there was they fed this homeless cat for like 10 years and it's wailing because there's nobody there no more. So we start feeding it. Come home the next night, that homeless cat is sitting on my front porch right there with another cat. I'm like, okay, got you a girlfriend. Come home two nights after that, swear. The two cats and a possum sitting fucking side by side right on my front porch. I said, this shit's getting out of hand, man. It's getting out of hand. Much love to all you guys. I gotta go in and get my leather. Give my Amy a kiss goodbye. Hey, baby. I'm gonna go for a little ride real quick. Give me a mooch. I love you. How'd you get so beautiful? She gets to work home from home today. She's a business executive. I'm really proud of her. She started out uh, wiping asses as a caregiver out in Arizona. She worked her way up. What? Oh. She, she worked her way up to, I mean, these were high, high end. Oh, she's up here, babe. High end assisted living homes. And she. She uh, was managing all three buildings. I mean, these were big buildings. Got like 
50, well, about 30 people in each building. And she did everything, staffing, groceries, everything, work schedule, payroll. The only thing she didn't do is she couldn't write scripts. She's not a nurse, nurse practitioner, nothing like that. But if somebody got bed sores, she'd fire whoever was taking care of them because they weren't getting rotated right. She made sure those old people got taken care of. But I'm going to hop off here. Wish me luck. It's like playing dodgeball with these cars here, man. Everybody's on phones now, nobody pays attention. Love and respect. <laughs>